Hello and welcome to Nepal Traveler once again. Welcome to our Travel Trade Talk. And today we have with us some very exciting guests. <coughs> the lovely ladies from the travel and tourism sector, the hospitality restaurants. And today we're talking about women in tourism. So on our panel today, first is Touch Names, who is very well known for her restaurant. It's, it's a landmark in Kathmandu, Touch Names Kitchen, King's Kitchen. Yes. Uh, our second panelist is Sona Sakya, who is with uh, Zenit Experience. Mm. And then there's our uh, Reena Sherchan, who is from the hotel here and who's hosting us. Uh, to start with, ladies, uh, how does it feel to be in tourism and what are some of the challenges, some of the, the takeaways that you have as women in tourism? Okay. I mean, see, for me, uh, <coughs> basically, I have never faced any kind of major challenge. I mean, I've been into the hospitality. So for me, I would talk from the point of view of my restaurant. And um, I have never faced being I know, any challenges, even being a woman who's running a business. Or uh, I did not face any challenges, even from my family point of view. Probably there were two reasons in that. And I've been very lucky because when I started the restaurant, my kids were a little older. So probably if they were younger, yes, I would have had to face a lot of challenges looking after their school, college, you know, maybe that was the thing. And uh, if you talk about any suppliers, vendors or customers or generally people, how they deal with a woman, you know, instead of a man, um, I've been very lucky. They've been, in fact, they've been very accommodating. They've been very friendly and they've always helped me out. So no challenges as such for me. I'm sure not. For me, I would say I did face many challenges and that too, just for being a mother, uh, sorry, women. <laughs> so uh, every time I get to hear that you are a woman, you can't do that, you can't do it. You shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that. So I get that a lot. But the only thing is I have my parents who have been supportive, uh, supportive of whatever I do. So because of them and even I have been fortunate enough to be working in a company who's led by a woman and she is very she has been very supportive and empowering for, to me so uh, you do face challenges but the thing is if you have good support system i think you can overcome yeah. anything yeah yeah even for me uh, to be honest my family they've been very supportive and i've been working not road and in nepal since long time uh, heading sales and marketing so it is a very challenging job uh, as a women i think it is very much male dominated any which yeah. way so we need to deal with a lot of men uh, even in office, I mean, uh, sometimes I'll be the only woman who's in the leadership role. So that way, sometimes you feel a little bit lonely also. Yeah. And there's not another person who can understand. Especially in leadership role, exactly. you are very, very judged. But luckily in tourism, there are mm. a lot of women also. Like yeah. uh, in terms of education and all, everybody has been given equal opportunities. So we have ladies. But I think it's the leadership role where yeah. there, there is some lacking of women leadership. So you feel like sometimes you're alone, always with the men. <laughs> Maybe they don't understand, right? So, yeah, yeah, there has been one instance where I had to take this all male group. It's uh, It was 40, 45 plus male group. It was all male and I was the only female. I was the youngest and I was the only female. And I, I was supposed to travel with them as a group leader. And there were many people who suggested me to back out because you are taking them all male group to Thailand. But I didn't listen to anyone and I just went on that trip and I can say that it was one of the easiest group I had to handle in my career because uh, do you mm. think that women consciously would choose to come into tourism or would there be some amount of fear no it's tourism I'd rather go to another line mm, I think in terms of like in terms of hotel industry if you look at it I mean everybody's studying hotel management either it's girl or Oh, oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. And at that point, I don't think they realize. Mm -hmm. Also, like even when I started my hotel management at that time, I didn't realize, you know, it's women or men uh, driven kind of job. Uh, but in Nepal, uh, earlier we had a lot of restrictions for women <coughs> to work right. 24 hours, even to work in a hotel because people thought maybe it's like you know, a yeah, different yeah. kind of role. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, I think it's very easy. Everybody can be in this role. Uh, but again, then there is travel industry, yeah. there is airlines. Even in is, travel agency, yeah. you don't uh, really think that you are a female or a male. Just you work in, you come to work in travel agency just because you have pas passion for travel and tourism. See, like when even so, I appoint any staff in my restaurant, 
I would prefer that for the evening shift, I would have some boys <laughs> and not girls. Because uh, being a mother myself, I'm always tensed. Will the girls reach home safely? What if they go somewhere? Though it's not my responsibility after work what they do, but still you feel, you know, I hope they just reach home safely. And in a place like Nepal right now, you do not have good transport in the nights. So when a restaurant shuts at after 10, 10, 30, uh, it's like you're always tensed. How will the girl go? And every day it's not affordable to go by taxis mm. unless the girl has a scooty of her own. So there are a lot of these things, you know, like uh, even I would think twice before appointing a girl for a late night job. It's just out of the security point of view. So, Also, having girls, let's say, as waitresses or in tours or in the hotel, does that sometimes create a problem? Because people feel that, okay, there's a girl, so I can act silly or I can say what I feel like. And Yes. There have been. There have been a lot yeah. of instances, I would say. <laughs> like, see, I am um, a woman. I'm running an establishment. So nobody tries to act funny with me, at least. But yes, yeah. when I've had girls who are as waitresses and all, um, I myself am pretty protective. Like when I tell the boys, like if you see some guys are drinking, automatically, please do not let the girls go and serve. Boys, you all take over. Because there may be some people, you know, though in Nepal, I found, at least where my restaurant is concerned, it's a very safe environment. Like nobody will touch or talk. But still, it is a little bit of a concern because some people may just pass some wrong comments on them. So you have to be particular when girls are there. But we need to change this. Actually, this is the problem here. Uh, everything, just because you think that you are being misbehaved or you will be misbehaved, you yes. keep your girls at home. Yes. That should be changed. We, we yeah. should be able to give the safe environment to the girls. Tell them if someone says or do, do something wrong with you, you, you have to be firm yourself. Yes. Stand you for yourself. Yeah. We have and uh, complain or do whatever the right choice is uh, is at that point so that has to be changed <laughs> yeah i think in patel it's 24 hour job right and um, obviously we solve everything alcohol and everything so i in terms of misbehavior it can happen to boys also to girls also it's not just only women that's what i feel especially when people are not in the control right you almost be having more yeah. issues like room service and all you'll have to be a little exactly. more particular yeah and also, uh, like going back home, we discussed earlier. Right. So it's same even for boys because uh, you know anybody anything can happen yes. to anyone. Yeah. Yes. yeah, especially in this international in India, we are planning to do some karate oh. self discipline. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice self discipline <laughs> classes. So we yeah, training. Yeah. International that's in day, <laughs> but we are planning to do it for all the team so that okay. is, you know we know basic, right? Okay. When you, I mean, it might help yes. because there has been some incidents when people have been like, uh, you know they have been approached by some people so it was boys not girls though okay so yeah it, could it can be happen to anyone, anyone yeah, yeah but right. it's uh, it's more vulnerable to the girls yeah, yeah. with girls you yeah. have to be like more obviously it's, it's more and as women in tourism so these are the challenges that you face on the job there could <coughs> be an issue that comes up but how is it at home how do you balance this home and work because yeah. tourism is very challenging the timings are very late sometimes yeah. it's a night job sometimes how do you manage at home okay see for me i think so it's going to be a very different story compared to yours <laughs> so um again i would say i'm very lucky my kids are big they can manage their lives and i do not have to worry so i'm very blessed in that way and uh, I've had a lot of support even when I started the restaurant or when I started my, uh, you know, like the catering from home. I always had the support of my family. And I feel in any field, if you'd, uh, your husband or your spouse <coughs> is not supportive, it's not going to be possible. Because, uh, see, it's like, it's a very general, uh, uh, you know, mentality that, yeah, a lady has to look after the house also. Plus, she has to be, even if she goes out to work, she has to look after the kids, the food, you know, everything at home. So, it's, it's a very general thing. You're grown up with that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that way I've been very lucky. I really did not have to bother. My kids were big enough, have a very supportive husband. And we lived in a nuclear family being here. So I did not have to worry of extended family or somebody telling me what to do or what not to do. How is it with you? Okay, for me, for me also, I think I can say I have been very lucky because uh, uh, 
everything went smoothly because I have both in-laws and my family, both supportive family. My in-laws knew me before my our marriage, so they know my working hours. That they know that I won't be always there uh, when they required. And also, but it has been a bit challenging after I became a mother. But uh, the thing is, I had my parents who were ready to take care of my daughter. So, and. Every time when I whenever I need to travel frequently, so I won't be there at my home. I had to leave my daughter. Uh, I think when she was six seven months, because of the work commitment, okay. so I couldn't uh, postpone that or delay that. So I had to go and I had to leave my small baby. And there are instances where you get this mother guilt or something <laughs> like that. But I have been lucky uh, in a sense because my mother was there for her, so I could travel freely, just like like the way I used to travel before marriage or anything. So. Just uh, because of my parents, I could say that. And even even in my workplace, uh, my band, like I said, uh, she has been very flexible uh, flexible with me. She knew that I'm a new mom and all. And uh, till now, I ha I'm given very flexible working time. Sometimes I have to answer call even at one or two in the morning, or I have to attend to the, some client uh, at four or five in the morning or till late uh, 12, one. So. There are times like that, but the thing is, both my family, both uh, my husband's side and my side, both knows that the commitment I, ha I have for my work. So they have been supportive, and that's the biggest thing that have helped me to balance my work and li my personal life. Yeah. Yeah, at least same with me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's something obviously. Maybe I would yeah. be in this position also because uh, the work demands a lot of lot of um, yeah. commitments. You have to so. work in yeah. odd hours. Yeah, but the okay. mother guilt is always there. Yes, I faced it many times. <laughs> I faced it many times, especially when your kids are sick at home and you yeah. are there attending to customers and you feel, oh, has the kid eaten? Has the kid done this, that? Have they come from school? So that mm. guilt as a mother would always be there. Yeah. You know, whether it you've will, done the yes. best. In our case, right? In, yeah. I mean, in general also. In general. Yeah. In general. Yeah. In general. Yeah. Like some of the people, yeah. they have left the job because they couldn't manage both house yeah. and the, especially women, not the men. Yeah. So that I have realized, I found. I mean, and the, all the changes are for yeah. the women only yeah. after yeah. Yeah. motherhood yeah. or anything. Yeah. After yeah. marriage, beat after marriage. Yeah. 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 Go up the ladder mm. in tourism. They need to have a supportive environment. Yeah. Absolutely. Parents, yeah. Absolutely. 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 Otherwise, it's, it's very Otherwise so, you can't. Yeah. Have yes. Mm. Yeah, I yes. think they can do a role which is below beyond manager, like lower mm. level job. There is still okay, but once it's a manager, like leadership role or a manager role, that's when they need their family support a lot mm. because especially the timing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> okay. I mean, do women in tourism? I mean, do they get preferential treatment in a way? But, but you're not mm. going beyond this point. There's a glass ceiling there yes. <laughs> because now this is where you will stay. <laughs> Or do women actually get, have the opportunity to go ahead? Are you treated equally in terms of promotion, in terms of going ahead with responsibilities? Or, or she's a woman, it's nice, but we'll have her till here. Also, um, women in tourism are a lot mm. uh, hostesses, waitresses, yeah. now bartending, reception, yeah. eye candy. Yeah, are we really yeah. allowing women to, to yeah. you know, come up the ladder? I think there is equal opportunity for everybody. Uh, I mean, I'm here, so <laughs> I, it would be very wrong for me to say that there is opportunity. But are the women driving it or not? Or you know, uh, that that is there. It because depends on the woman how committed she is, mm, also, exactly. and how much she wants to go. Yeah. As long as you are firm on your ground, uh, you will be known. You will be recognized for your capabilities and your ab abilities. So I don't think that. Just because you are a woman, you will be stuffed uh, from flying. So you will have, if you have your wings ready, you are always flying, if one way or the other. But you will have, you will have this whole sky to fly. Yeah, there are opportunities, but mm. unfortunately, in the uh, you do in get, Japan, yeah. you get, you do get treated differently. Just because you are a woman, but the the treatment in differential, the this differential treatment is also different. Some will appreciate you, value you, and some will demean you, try to belittle you, but it's all up to you. I would say that it's completely up to you. It's up to you if you are you welcome that behavior or okay. not. Yeah. Right. Mm. So in general, when you look at Nepal, would you advise younger women to come into tourism? Take 100%. it as a tip. Yeah, yes, totally. Yes, yeah. definitely. Why heart? not? Yeah, yeah. from yeah. the bottom of the See, I feel in any field, like if I get tourism, I feel any field that they take up, 
they should have the passion for it they should have the love for it yeah. because it's uh, nowadays people are taking up jobs or uh, opportunities because of peer pressure or because of parental pressure yeah. so i don't think so it's like you know it's like oh i want to be working in a five star or i want to do something i want to open my own cafe or restaurant it's nothing like uh, because you have the money or because your friends are in it you do it so you should have the love for it because none of the jobs are going to be easy so my only advice to these young people would be right now is that do any any job but do it because you love doing it yeah. so and that would be nothing is easy like nothing is easy no, it's no, all difficult is, yes is, you should have uh, a yeah. love because yeah. obviously you are dealing with everybody mm. international tourist local yeah. tourist and then different kind of people 24 hour job absolutely yeah, you have to away from have, be uh, away from the home yeah holidays yeah. during festivals those are our peak seasons mm. especially in yeah. october <laughs> november is our peak season yes. absolutely there are different yeah. customers like you know some will really put you down some will treat you so nicely mm. so and some people cannot take it like you know even when we have staff i always tell them do not take it personally what happens mm. in the work leave it there and you go because yeah. uh, this is nothing to do what you are as a person is just your work related because people are very sensitive so you know sometimes when a customer is very rude to them they do not realize it but that may have a very bad effect on the mm. staff Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Otherwise, I think it's a very good. Uh, it's a it's a good thing. It's very nice. Yeah. It's tourism is very yes. dynamic. Exactly. And industry you get, and you get to, you get to travel a lot. Meet a lot of people. You exactly. need to learn new things. Every day is new learning experience for yes. you. So every day you get to new, learn new things. It's and I would just like to say one thing that uh, you are never too old to learn. So every day. Correct. every day you get to learn not just from your senior you can learn from your junior as well your peers your colleagues and uh, new people so every day ev- uh, you meet new people you learn new things so as long as you have the passion uh, passion to learn you can definitely come to this industry tourism industry and explore yourself also and, as long mm-hmm. as you are hard working yeah <laughs> <laughs> and yes. ready to yes. be away from yes. the home you need to be hard working yeah. in any any field yeah, i think so field, yeah. yeah and and as women professionals tourism professionals we keep coming back to this issue most of the hotels tell us that they can't get manpower in tourism or oh, hotels because everybody is going abroad yes. and yeah, i think that's this is also true, happening yeah. with with women so yeah. any advice on this how do you see the situation oh my god it's it's crazy because <laughs> believe me it's every day i go in or every day i get a message on my staff group it's like my visas come we are going abroad and it's crazy because you train the person you put in so much of effort you know and then it's like within 6 months 7 months or a year max they want to go out so i don't know how this can be curtailed you know where uh, people can be like you know i don't know what how does it come like with laws or with what but uh, everybody just wants to go out and though the nepal being a tourist place there are so many hotels five stars there's so much work that somebody could do here but yeah. uh, i feel it's like the grass is greener on the other side yeah. for them and it's also among women i mean among yes. men yes there yes no 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 i have i have many girls who have gone out and they were the very hard working ones and they have done very well and now of course they've got married they've got settled but yes it's not only young boys there are even young girls who are willing to go out and it's not only i would say the waiters or the wait or the staff it even goes to the ladies who are washing the utensils or who are cleaning mopping and they just don't know they just want to pay the travel agent and go they just want to go but they don't know what's in store for them and these at uh, this level of people like you know when they're not educated and they are just paying the money and they don't know what they're going to land up with so i personally know three people who have gone and I don't know what's happening with them right now. So it's quite a sad state. Yeah, it's same. yeah, it's same because uh, with the people who work for you for 5 6 months or so and they apply for visa, they get the visa done and then go. it's a uh, uh, mostly because uh, we here are not able to uh, give what they have uh, given us. So yeah. they feel yeah, like nice if we if we if they go out of country they'll earn more they learn more the, yes the main yes. point is that the earn the earning thing the money uh, money part they think that if if the equal amount of time they they are spending here if even the half 
half of the time they are able to give uh, in the foreign countries they think that they can earn double the money so and it's true because if yeah. like uh, like if you apply for uae or something and if you get the job at the travel agency the the salary you get here it's more than double triple so obviously it's yeah most of my staff attractive. my waiters are in korea and japan <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yes, and they are in the government-to-government -government job, so they are paid very well. Yeah. And yeah, it is a lot of hard work. And the boys who have left were very hardworking, so there was no way that I could even stop them because they deserved a better life, yeah. which I could not afford or match to those yeah. salary levels probably. If I knew Japanese, probably even I would go with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even to me, what I think is like it's good to also go abroad and get that exposure, right? Mm. Because uh, now we've yeah. got new hotels where we have international chain, but earlier there was not much opportunity over here to learn in Korea. So it's good to maybe go for one year or two years and then maybe yeah. learn things and then come back. But the thing is, but the problem they is go, they won't come back. Yeah, they never <laughs> come back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nobody would come back yeah. because they own the lifestyle, the, big world. the earning yeah. thing, everything. It's more attractive in the foreign countries, I would say. And yeah, that's the biggest challenge yeah. right now. I think. Yes. Obviously, yes. we have a shortage of manpower. And then, uh, Crazy. The thing is, the skill manpowers are leaving country. The problem is, it's no, not it, just it's, it's a, a labor main, drain also, yeah. and it's a brain, brain drain. It's mm. both the drains. Yes. Like I have experienced both. Like I told you, even uh, the washing, the lady who, who would wash mm. utensils or mop mm. the floors and all. Yeah. Everybody, they cannot read or write. They cannot sign their name. But they just know they have to pay a certain amount of money and then they just want to leave and go. Yeah. As a final wrap up question, what would you say is the best part about you being a woman in tourism? Okay, in these so many years that I've been running a restaurant, okay, or being in the hospitality, I've come across so many different kinds of people from different nationalities cultures and uh, believe me so many have become close they become like closer than a family would be so you get to meet a lot of people learn a lot of things and yes every time i meet a customer i'm learning something new so it's, it's amazing i would <laughs> mm -hmm. say yeah <laughs> for me also it's amazing and uh, the most happiest thing the joyous moment is when you are able to create some unforgettable unfor memor memories for yeah. them the, yeah like we there are people who travel just once in their lifetime they uh, they save their whole heart and money and they travel and if uh, you are able to make that travel that that trip memorable for them i think nothing gives more joy yes. than that yes. yeah so satisfaction satisfaction yeah yeah also i think when uh, people look up to you and then they mm. see you as you know a kind yes. of role model and then they aspire yes. to be like you yeah. that's also very encouraging obviously i you usually learn from my junior also i look yeah. at them the amount of effort they absolute and then you learn from them all the time but you know the way they look up at you is also very inspiring yes. at times like it keeps you motivated and then you want to set some benchmark for mm. everybody you know you want to break that singing so that the next person is also mm. aiming to be maybe better than you, you know? yeah. yeah true yeah. thank you so much for all thank you time. so much for having thank us so here thank you so us. much thank you so much thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you.